Today, we look at Royal Caribbean's Independence of the Seas. This family-friendly cruise was the wildest cruise I've been on. Stay tuned. I'm getting ready to board the Independence of the Seas for a four-day cruise. This will be my first time traveling solo on a cruise. I'm a little bit nervous and excited at the same time. And there's some safety videos that you can watch on the app so you don't have to do that on board. They allow you to do that beforehand. Once you complete those, you can relax once you get on board. And it does have your muster station that you still have to go in to check in. Before the sailing, if I'm not reviewing a new hotel, I love to stay at the W Miami in the Brickell area. This Marriott property offers a full breakfast for Bonvoy members, has an amazing pool, but more importantly for me, it has free access to the best spa in Miami, the Icon Brickle Spa, which has multiple hot tubs, cold plunges, saunas, steam room. To me, this is the perfect way to relax before going on a cruise. I took an Uber to the port, which was approximately $10. If you're looking for hotels near the port, I would just factor in the cost of an Uber, as opposed to looking for something with a free shuttle, since the options are very limited. I got the earliest check-in at 11.30, which I did on the app. I'm here 30 minutes prior so I can get some video and get settled in. We would be sailing out of Terminal G. The lines for check-in were really short, and I was making my way on board in less than five minutes after entering the terminal. Pretty impressive. While getting on the ship early is nice, it also means waiting for luggage, which I wouldn't get in my cabin until four hours later. So if you want to take advantage of the pools, bring your swimsuit in your carry-on. Just sitting here at this lounge, people watching, waiting for my luggage. I forgot how many kids are in Royal, especially on a holiday weekend. And speaking of kids, Travel and Leisure just put out their Best of 2024 awards, voted on by its readers. And in the category Favorite Mega Ship Ocean Cruise Line, Royal came in fifth on the list. While I tend to agree with this list for couples or people traveling without kids, I think you can easily flip this list around and put Royal on the top for people that are traveling with children. With actually Disney Cruise Line being my top choice for families. Since I was sitting outside of Sorrento's, I decided to have pizza for lunch instead of the usual visit to the Windjammer Buffet. On average, Sorrento's is open from 11 a.m. to 3 in the morning, making it one of your few late-night food options on board. Embarkation Day was on the 4th of July, the day Americans celebrate the birth of their independence. And the ship was decked out in red, white, and blue for the celebrations later that night. Traveling during a U.S. holiday also means big crowds on a ship. This is the Windjammer Buffet on Embarkation Day. It is crazy hot. I went to check out the gym and was surprised at the great shape that all the equipment was in and how spacious the space is. The changing rooms are located inside the gym and the facilities are open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. I used the saunas twice during the sailing and the space was always kept clean. So you can tell the age of the ship with this area, but it's nice that you don't have to pay money to use the sauna or steam room. Plenty of towels. There's the sauna, which is pretty hot and steam room which i can't open the entrance to the gym is also the check-in desk for the spa you climb the stairs to go up to the spa facilities right above so if you don't have your powder this is pretty cool what to do right now and here's your powder with everything going on the doors for the hallways and the state rooms are locked up until 1 p.m so i'm gonna go check it out to see if my room and luggage is ready. It's one o'clock. Well, that sucks. I got another two hours to wait for the luggage. The promenade is the heartbeat of the Royal Caribbean ships, and there's always one unique antique car in each of them. The promenade has clear visibility to some of the rooms, which is also kind of creepy. The cafe promenade is open 24 hours, and as I looked over the food and sweets available, they just didn't look too appealing. Okay, I think they can do better than this chocolate chip cookie. Our last cruise in Royal was on Icon of the Seas, and I couldn't help but to compare the offerings at the Pearl Cafe, which all looked and tasted delicious. I think Icon of the Seas might have ruined some of my Royal experiences moving forward because I know the quality of food that they are capable of. So let's take my, a look at my cabin, which is 9665. We come in, and I am pretty happy with the size. It's pretty spacious for an interior room. Uh, let's check out the storage. So I love this. 
there is plenty of storage, which is the problem of sun ships. There's the safe racks right here, hangers to hang up your stuff. Oh, this is cool. So there's a button to turn off and on the announcements. Bathroom is going to be, let's look at it. Looks like a hospital bathroom, but it's spacious, a stand up shower. Uh, hair, body, and wash all in once. I brought my own stuff because this stuff is usually pretty harsh. A decent sized bathroom for one or two people. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this. I'd rather be in an inside cabin where it's half the cost and it gets so dark to sleep that it's such a great night of sleep and the air conditioning stays on colder during the summer, which is an added bonus. The attire for the night was red, white, and blue for the 4th of July. I made my way up to the top deck to catch Sail Away. There were a few staff members dancing, but that was about it. Sailing out of Miami is always such a cool experience. The views on the left side of the ship, or as known as the port side, are always much better than the opposite side of the ship, which you are mostly just looking at the terminal. I think the views are even better if you have a balcony as you are so close to the land. It's way too hot, so I'm coming down here to see the cell away. Killed some time at the promenade, people watching before time for dinner. On my way to dinner, I have the five o'clock dining and the line is already pretty much backed up. I am gonna find table 336. Oh, this is gonna be a challenge. Hello, 200, so I gotta find 336. There's right, Joel, 336, I'm assuming is over here somewhere. It's looking like I'm way in the corner somewhere. 336, no, not over here, it's gonna be over here. It looks like I'm gonna be over here, 336. My reward for finding my seat was a table right by the window. With set time dining, I would get to keep this table for the rest of my sailing, as well as the same waiting staff. Since I was traveling solo, it was nice to see the same faces for dinner each night. I'm not sure if it was a coincidence, but I noticed that solo travelers were seated by the windows, which is great as opposed to sitting in the middle of the dining room all by yourself. So this is the 4th of July menu. My waiter said they only offer this menu once a year. The buffalo chicken dip was absolutely tasty. And being from Texas, we have good beef brisket, and this dish did not disappoint. Finished up with some apple pie and a slice of strawberry cake with an American flag. <laughs> One of the biggest trends in travel right now is the rise of solo travelers, with cruises expecting a 36% increase in solo travelers this year. Some cruise lines have gotten ahead of the trend and have began offering cabins for solo travelers. In 2010, Norwegian Cruise Line was one of the first to offer solo studio cabins accompanying studio lounges for single travelers. And when it comes to catering to solo travelers, Norwegian is still out ahead, offering 128 solo cabins on some of their ships. Adults only Virgin Voyages has 40 interior cabins for singles on its super yacht style ships. Both lines offer well organized programs for solo travelers to connect on board. Don't feel bad coming by yourself because there's so many solo travelers. You will make I'm friends. Solo. That's the truth. Yeah. Yes. Well, Caribbean, well, that's not a priority for them at the moment since their main customers is families. They did have a singles meetup at Vintages, but for some reason they scheduled it at the same place and time as the LGBT meetup, making for some confusing introductions. I did meet some cool people that I would get to hang out with during my sailing though. Afterwards, I went over to Studio B on the third deck where ice skating is complimentary during the day and you can catch their amazing skating show at night. That was cool. There was never a shortage of fun things to do at night. Latin music was always hopping and the Royal Promenade was packed for the 4th of July festivities. Free champagne was being passed out right before the big moment of the night, the drop of the 4th of July balloons. I had such a blast and Royal did an amazing job for 4th of July. I was on Princess last year during the holiday and the extent of their celebration was just some decorations on the ship. After a long day, it was time to call it a night. My night is about to end with 18,000 steps logs. Good night. It is so dark in here. That's why I love an inside cabin. The lines from breakfast are just crazy long everywhere you go. 
I love a good breakfast buffet. The buffet would be extremely busy each morning and finding a place to sit was a difficult task each time. The food was good, but I found the selection to be very limited. Stepping outside the breakfast, I was greeted by Icon of the Seas parked right next to us. So we've been on Icon of the Seas and it's a wonderful ship. I've done multiple videos on the ship experience. The sheer size of it is incredible. They do so many things well on that ship, including the buffet area, which never felt as crowded as it did on the Independence of the Seas. Staying on board during a port stop is something that I started doing recently at times, and I love having the ship to myself. If you want to do the flow rider or any of the other water sports, it's best to do it on a port day. As you can see, there's no lines anywhere for all the rides. Only stop we would have on this Fortnite cruise would be at Royals Private Island, perfect day at Coco Cay. I love coming here and there's so much to see and do. There's also plenty of opportunities to spend money, but there's plenty of spots that are free also. I was planning on filming around the whole island, but the heat was too intense. Holy crap, this sun is brutal. I need to get into some shade. I decided to join my new friends and go to the Hideaway Beach, the adult only portion of the island. We need, we need to get a tan and we need to get on one of those. Oh, we do? Yeah. We're about to take the tram to the Hideaway Beach because it's really hot. It's not too far. What's that? No, I'm just... Coco Cay is about a mile long and there's three different trolley systems set up to take you to different parts of the island. While you can easily walk to Hideaway Beach, the train is free and you might as well take it. What's not free is Hideaway Beach. Before my sailing, I saw it for sale as cheap as $39. The girls reserved their spot the day before on board for $59. My price for entry would be much higher. So showing up, it cost me $92. With the world's largest cruise ship, Icon of the Seas being here on the same day, there were some fears of the island being way too crowded. But that wasn't the case here as there was always plenty of space available. It's right after 11 o'clock in the morning and there's still plenty of chairs and umbrellas behind me even with Icon of the Seas here. Are you having a blast? I am, I'm having a great time. Hi! Your drink package works here and all the food is included. While I'm a big fan of the Hideaway Burger, I couldn't resist to try something from the secret menu. So uh, apparently there's a hidden menu item. It's a secret chicken sandwich. There's a, a really good. I love secret so chicken we, sandwiches. We, so we just ordered it. Oh. What, what is this the hidden chicken sandwich? Oh. Uh, secret. secret, right? I won't tell you what makes this chicken sandwich special, but I'll let you find out for yourself. We just finished our lunch. The heat has been brutal. So we're gonna go back to the ship and relax. Cause there's a lot of dancing tonight. Some Latin dancing and we're gonna do the silent disco. Did you have fun? Oh yeah, I had yeah. fun. Yeah. I wanna dance with somebody. I wanna feel the heat with somebody. With somebody who loves me. So we're taking another train. After standing in line, they told us we can't get on this trolley cause it doesn't go to the ship. So we're walking. We got back to the ship early and it was still pretty empty. I needed to pick me up before the evening activities. I tend to drink way too much coffee when I come on these cruises. I read about matcha right before, so I bought some matcha powder and it's worked really well for me. It doesn't give me the body aches that coffee normally does. Hello everybody, this is Mario, your cruise director. It is going to be a great day, great celebrations, a very busy day all over. Shows in the Royal Theater, shows in Studio B. I found a duck and let's see what it says. Keep her hiding. You decide. I am gonna keep this one. This is pretty. So I found the cutest little duck. It came from the Vasquez family. I think I'm gonna rehide it and give someone else the, the joy of finding the duck. There's the duck right there. Muffin night two of dinner at the dining room. What a cool view. We got a taste of Italy today, Italian. Or a strip steak, which is, I don't think is Italian, is it? I went with lasagna, which was pretty decent. These were the two recommendations on Italian day for dessert. It's like a lemon tart and tiramisu. By the second day on the ship, any fears that I would be bored traveling solo had disappeared. There were so many things to do at night. One of the highlights was karaoke, which we went with some friends I had met the night before. Happy to you. Oh my god! 
Next was a show at the Royal Theater, which for a sold out cruise was never an issue getting a seat for any of the shows. For the last event, I met up with the girls for one of my favorite activities on board. We're in line for Silent Disco and it is hot. Oh, 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 oh. Wow, they ran out of headphones with about a hundred people in line. Oh, somebody. We have each other and that's a lot for love. We're getting in a shot. Whoa. Well, it's late in the night and my cabin attendant brought an extension cord. I didn't even ask for it, but my CPAP machine got it connected here and it barely reaches. I'll be able to connect it and have it closer to me. That's pretty awesome. Well, unfortunately, I missed breakfast this morning. So my first meal of the day is from the Windjammer Buffet for lunch. I went the comfort food route and it actually looks really good. All right, this is what happens when the Ozempic wears off. I've been on several Royal Caribbean cruises and this one felt very different. It felt like a carnival cruise and not because any fights broke out, but because it felt more like a party cruise than a family cruise. And I saw a lot of things that I just can't show on video. I had to ask my fellow passengers on Facebook and I got tons of confirmations. Samantha said, my mother-in-law said this feels more like a party boat than her last carnival cruise. Another person wrote, absolutely more of a party especially at the adult pool just shy of strip club based on some of the young ladies behavior and matthew said for sure this feels wilder than our last cruise which was a three-nighter on a lure during the saint patrick's day weekend have you been on a short cruise before what was your experience like let me know in the comments below It was time for the International Belly Flop Competition. <laughs> it was standing room only for this event. You had to secure your spot early for a prime location. The competition was fierce, but at the end of the day, there could only be one winner. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the winning flop. crowd loved it. What a great sport. That was so much fun. Our four-night sailing originally had a stop in Haiti, but that was canceled weeks before the cruise, so we ended up with two sea days in which the ship just stayed parked a few miles east of Miami. Wow, this is so beautiful. Look at this. So peaceful. Third night for dinner, and it is formal night. Tonight, I gave away my table to the two ladies sitting uh, next to me so they can enjoy the views. I had a wedge salad, a chicken breast dish, and a chocolate chip cookie for dessert. I was thinking of trying the Japanese restaurant Izumi on board one night. Pretty cool. This is an added cost. Might be a good idea to meet some people on this sailing. But the food in the main dining room was good enough each night, and the prices of Izumi deterred me. There was a daytime show with a group from Argentina. They were having a hard time getting the audience engaged at first though. Yeah! The pool is packed with people watching soccer. Killing some time on the ship. I'm going to go to the Windjammer to see what the dinner options look like. <laughs> It's like 15 minutes before the couple game show and there's like absolutely no place to sit. It's still back in here. This was a rowdy event. During one part of the competition, the couples had to get behind the screen and switch clothes. Regardless of where they were at in the process, the screen goes up in 45 seconds, sometimes revealing couples that were too afraid to switch. sometimes revealing things better left for adults. <laughs> the rowdiness continued, but eventually was replaced with another event, more karaoke, where the first singer did her cruise ship karaoke taboo. You don't sing this on a cruise. 
sing a song about a cruise ship sinking. For breakfast, it's going to take a lot of patience every morning to get a table at the Swindrama. The buffet was always super busy, and on this morning, I had several sets of strangers sit with me to have their breakfast and conversate. One woman in particular sat down with me as I was enjoying a loaded plate of sugar. She had the healthiest plate of fruit ever. I'm not going to lie, I was feeling a bit judged as she sat there drinking her tea in silence. It's been great conversations this morning with strangers. Oh man, it's hot up here. Because the ship spent the last two sea days literally parked close to Miami, the ship didn't benefit from the winds of the moving ship. So it was pretty hot everywhere on board and there were plenty of loungers available all over the ship as it seemed like everyone that was outside gathered at the swimming pools to cool off. You can find the dress attire for each night on the Royal app before you're sailing. I had a floral shirt on for the final night, which was a Caribbean themed just like the menu. Caribbean chicken was one of my favorite meals on board, and it comes with one Jamaican fried dumpling, which were so good, I asked my waiter for a plate with a side of them, before finishing dessert with a pineapple sunshine cake. A full 90 minute Broadway production of Grease was the main show on the final night. I enjoyed it a lot more than I expected. Broadway shows are usually not my favorites. I called it an early night since I had to be one of the first off the ship in the morning for a flight. I am so up early. It's like I've got the rocking of the ship at 4 a.m. woke me up as we got to uh, the dock to the port and my flight is already super delayed. It's a ghost town. Need some coffee somewhere. Oh yeah, this is open. 6 a.m. and the buffet is opening up on disembarkation day. Final breakfast. This is the healthy part and not the not so healthy part. The breakfast selection is very limited. I just want to give some quick thoughts on my experience on Independence of the Seas. I totally enjoyed my time here, especially for the cost of this sailing compared to more expensive like Icons of the Seas or some of the Oasis class ships. I think it's a really good value. Plenty of stuff to do at night, tons of entertainment choices. So I was always trying to decide what to do. Food was good, nothing special. I didn't try any of the specialty dinings because I'm not usually a fan of Royals offerings. I think the food that they offer in the main dining room is good enough. As a first time solo traveler, the people that I met the first night ended up being the people that I would hang out with or just talk to throughout the rest of the sailing. It was very important to kind of make some connections early on. When I felt uncomfortable or lonely, I had some people to reach out to. And also I was keeping in touch with Joel and a lot of my friends back home throughout this uh, sailing. Anytime I felt like I needed to talk to someone or kind of do a sanity check. It's been an amazing experience. I would definitely come back on the ship I think, I think this is one of the worst options for kids on Royal. Just the entertainment at night does not suit children for the most part. A lot of the music and entertainment at night has been based on like stuff from like the 50s and 60s and even the 70s. So there's nothing modern when it comes to music and entertainment for like, teenagers or young adults. Icon of the Seas is great for family and children, but this one, it felt like a party cruise. And there's a lot of adults, there's a lot of kids, but it felt like a party cruise. It was a great cruise made much better by all the cool friends I met on this sailing. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you like content like this, please subscribe to the channel as it really helps this little channel grow. And as always, thanks for watching.